Britain, a nation known for many things, from stiff upper lips to tea and biscuits, and our contribution to world cuisine, the mighty roast dinner. But of course, no meal is complete without a dollop of delicious dessert. Sometimes a great meal isn't finished until you've had a nice pudding. And whether you call it a pudding, a sweet, or your afters, we're a nation obsessed. Dessert has to be served, and I have to eat it. Sometimes a great meal is just a pudding, I suppose, isn't it? Be they a fruity delight for a summer's night or a rich and decadent winter warmer, desserts have been saving the most mundane of midweek meals for generations. Oh, my goodness me. Now that is delicious. The creamier, the better. The sweeter, the better. The chocolatier, the better. Oh, God, I've got so many sweet teas. <laughs> They've been used to bribe us. We've got a treat tonight. We're going to have a Viennetta. And reward us. Get in. Ever since our first spoonful, I will skip course one, course two, and have five desserts. And nobody does desserts quite like us. We've got a great history of puddings in this country. We are the best. We're better than France. Because France makes dainty little things. Who the hell wants that? I like the kind of pudding that a dinner lady can make in seven and a half minutes. We want solid stuff that can sink the Titanic. So this is number 20, Britain's 20th favourite afters. And I shall reveal, I'm hoping it's something with custard. OK, number 20, don't let me down. And the first dessert serving our sweet tea is an imported exotic classic. What is that? Baklava. Baklava? I'm going to sound really stupid, but what is that? I make a great baklava. What is it? A baklava? Yeah. I don't know, but this little VD package might tell us. Yes, originating from the Ottoman Empire, baklava is so revered Many countries take the credit for its invention, including Greece, Turkey, and various Arabic, African, and Middle Eastern cultures with over 20 regional variants. Is it Greek Turkish or is it just Greek dessert? I don't know. Is it Turkish? It's not Greek, the dessert, is it? I mean, I don't know if you can get it in Greece as well. You can get Turkish baklava, Greek baklava, you can get baklava from M Morocco, Tunisia. Is that an Italian thing? Essentially, a rich, sweet pastry made with layers of phyllo. It's filled with chopped pistachios, topped with more phyllo, and covered in oodles of syrup or honey, weighing in at around 230 calories a slice. That's my kind of dessert. Ooh, that's... You've got to get the real thing. You can't just go to the supermarket and get the pretendy ones done in the thing. No. Beautiful, crunchy, ground pistachio nuts, layers of pastry, phyllo pastry, and then this glorious flower-scented syrup. Wrap up warm, kids, cos for number 12, we're heading up north. Oh, it's Arctic Roll! Oh, Arctic Roll! Arctic Roll! Do they still do Arctic Roll? Look at this machine-made perfection. So oh. is that like ice cream wrapped up in sort of cake? Wrapped up in sort of like a spongy thing. This sort of dessert is very much a school dessert. You know, when they didn't have the Swiss roll, and chuck this one in. Oh, it's good. Oh, it tastes like primary school. My compliments to the chef. Mm. Invented in the 1950s, Arctic Roll hits its snowy peak in the 70s and 80s, and oddly was loved for being so bad, it was good. It's so bad, it's wonderful. Raspberry jam, vanilla ice cream, and this wonderful chemical sponge. It really is rather lovely. But that was what made Arctic Roll Arctic Roll. The fact that the sponge was just so crap. It's a cheap dessert, but it is comforting. That is the essence of childhood right there. This amazes me. How do they do it? How do they get the ice cream like that? And then the... It's like science. <laughs> Quite simple, really. It's a thin layer of sponge smothered in raspberry jam. Ice cream goes down the middle and it's rolled up like a frozen fajita. This is the 70s. And this was in innovative. In innovative. Forward thinking, that's what this was. This was forward thinking. It's one of the first mass produced puddings at a time when people still made their own puddings. My mum used to go to bee jams. 
See, like, a lot of people right now don't even know what I'm talking about. OK, Waitrose, B-jams. Now on to number eight, and without a doubt, the most controversial entry in the countdown. Ah! Not a dessert, is it? <gasps> yes! It's just another course. You might as well put soup there. Oh, I love a cheese board. Cheese board as a pudding? Pudding? Cheese board? That's amazing. I love a cheese board and I will very often order that instead of pudding. No, you can't replace pudding with cheese. This or a sticky toffee pudding. It isn't dessert. Whoever's brought this, you take it away. Technically, it is another course. But it comes after dinner and you voted for it, so it's in. Starting out as the food of sailors, soldiers and explorers, crackers could stand months at sea and could be eaten with a ration of cheese. By the 1850s, selections of various cheeses and biscuits were appearing on menus in restaurants. But what makes a good one? Something hard. <laughs> Something soft. Got to have a cheddar on there. Yes! A bit of blue cheese from time to time. The British expect something with this. You need a, a chutney. They want crackers, basically. I hang around with French people and they're like, what do you need all of this stuff on the board for? It's cheese. You eat the, you eat the cheese. You get the knife, you eat the cheese. <laughs> and British people are like, ooh, you got some Jacob's crackers. Oh, you know what's the best ones? The Hovis biscuits. The Hovis biscuits are ace. What well, would be on your ideal cheese board? I'm guessing it wouldn't be rat. It wouldn't be rat, no, but I love that episode of Faulty Towers. And when you say cheese board to me, that is what I think of. So basically, Manuel's rat's gone missing. And he's asking the guy, would you like, you know, would you like some cheese and biscuits? He opens the lid to the biscuits. Biscuits. <laughs> 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 And there's this little robotic rat thing, the little head coming up. <laughs> it's a good impression. And Basil goes, um, would you care would for, you um, for a rat? Rat? W would, you, would you care for a rat? <laughs> it's number four. Oh, cheesecake! Cheesecake! I should have said cheesecake now. This looks like a mango cheesecake. Cheesecake! Cheesecake! Cheesecake is great. Yeah, weird. Love it. Don't like cheese. Love cheesecake. It was a long time before I realised that cheesecake actually had cheese in it. Mascarpone, to be exact, mixed with cream and sugar, placed on a crumbled biscuit base and left to set. Dating back to ancient Greece in its basic form, it was the 1970s when, with the help of its iconic jingle, this ad from Greens convinced us that all we needed was some milk and a packet mix. Green, 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 green. Here we go. The cream of the crop, the tip of the top, the number one favourite dessert is... I think it might be a crumble of some sort. Or is it a pie? Apple crumble. Bread and butter pudding. It's apple pie. Or it could be jam roly-poly. Could be jam roly-poly. Number one Britain's favourite pudding slash afters slash dessert is... La 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 la! <laughs> In. Yay! <laughs> oh my god, it smells amazing. Oh, it's warm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes me so happy. You're going to ruin my day and tell me that it originated in America, aren't you? Well, as much as our friends across the pond like to tell us things are as American as apple pie, it's not. The oldest recorded recipe goes back to 1381 by Geoffrey Chaucer, the Canterbury Tales fella in England. But with apples being available across the globe, apple pie has become a truly international dessert, loved the world over. You can buy any old apple pie in any old supermarket, and if you put it in the oven, and the house smells of apple pie when you walk in and serve it with a little bit of cream, people will feel really loved and cared for. I think this is the ultimate comfort food. Really makes you feel good. Look at that. I mean, for some people, this would be the sort of thing you'd only really watch with private browsing on. <laughs>